So ladies and gentlemen, elections are around the corner and as you know, when people vote, they don't really put any sense into their voting. And this is not true for everybody, but at least a large chunk of the population is just going in blindly. But one way I thought I could contribute in my own small little meaningful way is to go back in time, look at some of the policies that the government has come up with and then break them down for you. Which means simplify your understanding of these policies. Try and see if I can give you an update on many of these policies and how it's worked out so that you are slightly more informed than yesterday. Look, I'm always going to see many of these policies from the eyes of business as I'm an entrepreneur myself. And therefore, many of these aspects are going to be whether it's good for business or not. But many a time, as much as we don't believe it to be true, what's good for business ends up being good for people as well because it improves the wealth of the nation. So in this particular episode, I'm going to cover the national logistics policy. Now, before I get into this, I only have one piece of advice for the government. Next time you're coming up with any of these policies, please call somebody from my team. I feel like the vision and what you've come up with is pretty good, but I think it's written slightly poorly. I think whoever has written this has complicated it a little more than necessary. In this video, I'm going to break it down in as simple a fashion as I can, and hopefully you get to learn something from it. So ladies and gentlemen, without much further ado, welcome to Breakdown. So let's talk about the national logistics policy. So Narendra Modi launched it on 17 September 2022. Now I've heard some incredible statistics about India that we're now the second largest road network in the world after the United States. Now I don't know who said this, but there's a very famous quote around this, which is that America doesn't build beautiful roads because it is wealthy. It is wealthy because they built beautiful roads. So it's almost like first you build the road network, then the wealth comes. And we're starting to see signs of that in India. But improving roads and highways alone are just one small part of the logistics puzzle. You've got things like ports, transportation systems, and more importantly, the technology behind all of this that actually powers a clear, transparent logistics system. So unlike typical breakdown reports, in this one, we made our own sort of internal report. And one of the first things we need to cover is the problems in the first place. Why did the NLP even get announced? The first problem is that if you look at countries like the US and Japan or companies like Apple, you'll notice their success isn't solely because of their product supremacy. It's also their mastery over supply chain and logistics. In fact, you could argue many of the top startups in India like Zomato or Flipkart, even though they do different things, is actually because of their logistics supremacy. You could argue that anyone could make an e-commerce website or a food delivery app today, yet you know that you can't compete with a Zomato or Flipkart very easily because they have a powerful delivery and logistics network. In fact, logistics doesn't just end at taking one product from point A to point B. The CEO at any point needs to be able to forecast how much revenue they'd make next week by looking at how many stocks are in keeping this week and also whether they need to restock the units and when. A good example is Apple itself, which is known to be a supply chain wizard in the business world and which stayed resilient even during COVID when many other phone brands were having supply chain issues. And remember, this is during a point where its manufacturing hub, China, was shut down because of COVID. In contrast, one of India's biggest weaknesses has been our logistics network. Not only is it slow, unorganized and fragmented, but our logistical costs is 14% compared to the global average of 8%. Now, a very long time ago, we had done a video on food and poverty and whether we have enough food to feed India. And the truth is we do have enough food to feed India. The hard part is getting them to people in tier three and tier four towns where there's no easy way to take the surplus of food that we have and make it reach the corners of the country where access by road is almost impossible. These are not even pakka roads, these are kacha roads. So India is actually having to pay a premium because our transportation system is not as good as it should be. And one of the biggest anomalies in all of this is our freight transportation system. You see the cost of transporting goods in India per metric ton per kilometer is around 18 rupees by air, 3.6 rupees by road, 2 rupees by water, 2 rupees by pipeline, and 1.6 rupees by rail. As per this trend, the railway should have the most common mode of transportation for goods in India, but it is not so. We should be using a lot more rail than we currently do. Our costs have majorly been high because of our dependence upon shipping goods via roads, despite having a very good railway network, but still a bad railway website. I guess we both agree on that. I'll tell you a very interesting stat. Over 70% of the goods we transport are through roads, which is actually the complete opposite of developed nations. Now, a major reason behind this is our railways don't have enough capacity. Secondly, both passenger and freight trains run on the same track, 
This is very different from developed nations where usually freight trains have separate tracks. And this causes delays while passenger trains are given more preference. But the biggest problem is our trains are really slow. In most of the developed countries, the train speed is much, much faster than the average train speed of India. The average speed of our freight trains, which is trains that carry these goods, is 25 km per hour, which is 3 to 4 times lower than trains in China. That's actually pretty slow. At 25 km per hour, you're actually a pretty slow logistics network. And as we spoke about, the road situation is also pretty bad. Compared to the global average of 500 to 800 km per day, Trucks in India travel only 300 km per day. They are often overloaded and have an empty running rate of 40%, which is double as compared to the US. So you see the problem. We've got trucks and some of those trucks are overloaded. They're packed with goods. Some of those trucks are empty because we have no visibility on how to take those goods and seamlessly put it into the different trucks. You need software and infrastructure for that to get the visibility to know which trucks are going out empty and which trucks are too overloaded. Today, as a manufacturer and a trader, unless you use like a DHL or one of the external providers, there is no way for you to track the status of your truck and know whether your goods are safe or not. And even if transportation would have been sorted, you'll stay stuck for days and even months trying to get through the countless intermediaries who have made this paperwork complicated. The minute you have a pen and paper, sorry, but it's going to take a lot of time. You need to digitize all of that. In fact, I have a stat here that says that there are 20 government agencies, 40 government partner agencies, 36 logistics services, 129 inland container depots, and they all rarely talk to each other on the infra side. They're running their own operations in the air, and it's almost like you have to guess what the other person is doing. So you see, because of all these inefficiencies in our logistics network and the lack of infra, we were losing $65 billion per year. So in 2017, the Modi government decided to transform our logistics network and came out with the national logistics policy. The aim was, number one, reduce the logistics cost from 16% of GDP to a global average of 8% by 2030. Number two is improve the logistics performance index ranking, which is in the ranking of all the countries in the world on how their logistics performance is, we wanted to be among the top 25 countries by 2030. And number three, create a data-driven decision mechanism for the logistics ecosystem. Instead of people just waking up and saying we should do this or we should do that, make sure many of those decisions have some data behind them. The national logistics policy has components like number one, multimodal connectivity, which is that India so far mainly dependent on the road transport system, which is an unimodal, it's one type of connectivity. Under the multimodal connectivity system in the national logistics policy, the government wants to utilize all modes, which is air, roadways, rail and sea for the shipping of goods. Number two is the ULIP, which is the Unified Logistics Interface Program. It's kind of like UPI. So it's the UPI for logistics, which will bring all the stakeholders in the logistics ecosystem under one roof. It's basically a 24-7 shipment app where you can book your truck, track it, pay fees, look at the documentation, etc. all in one place. The next thing is they proposed an e-log system, which is sort of like a digital complaint resolution mechanism, where you can send any problems and queries directly to the government to get them solved. And finally, they wanted to make sure all of this is integrated through integrated digital services, which connects various existing digital systems. So imagine scattered pieces of information, right, about a package bouncing around different offices. So the IDS actually combines them into a single clear picture. You know exactly what's going on. Not just you, the truck driver, the company, the government, everyone has one unified place to go to. But for a second, I want to talk about logistics costs. See, currently one of the reasons behind the high logistics cost of India is actually because of our model, which means that India currently follows a point-to-point -point model. A point-to-point -point model is a system where goods are transported from one point to the other without any stops. So let's say you're going from Chennai to Delhi, you're going directly from Chennai to Delhi. There's no stopovers, there's no better route planning, none of that. This might seem like an efficient way to transport goods, but like I told you earlier, in India, our trucks have the problem of high empty running rates. But in developed countries, the model followed is the hub and spoke model, which means there's a central hub in each of these major cities where all the trucks come make a pit stop and then according to what the software says, many of the trucks are reloaded so that on their journey back, they can be efficient and make more money. In fact, the biggest leak is these empty trucks on the return trips. So if you can solve that, you actually save a lot of the GDP that's just going waste in the fuel costs and all the other costs involved in them coming empty-handed. Moreover, we have two to three middlemen, 
who charge 15 to 20 percent of the truckers' earnings. Therefore, the cost of logistics, because of all these things, shoots up in India. Now, remember, many of these hubs right now are not what you're thinking. They're not some very very fancy places. Right now, they're just more like go-downs. So, one of the necessary parts of the NLP is to make many of these hubs warehouses for storage and have them fully digitally available, so you know where every item is inside the hub as well. For this hub and spoke model, it requires very high coordination between all stakeholders and proper digital tracking tools and management of the entire operation. Keeping this in mind, to complement the NLP, the Modi government has also launched the PM Gati Shakti scheme to transform India's logistics sector. While the national logistics policy will handle the logistics part, Gati Shakti will ensure that the adequate infrastructure is created. You see, a lot of infrastructure work in India is done without any coordination. In fact, if somebody is starting to work on a road today, you know that some other department will say, hey, you shouldn't have started without this. And there's a lot of confusion, right? And one thing I've learned growing up is that running a family is hard. Running a company is super hard. Imagine running a government. It's probably difficult, right? So it's no wonder that many of these teams are not coordinating with each other. And most of these teams, the water department, the road department, etc., etc., they need to be able to work together in a form where they know what the other person is up to. Because right now, that is very, very difficult. So the PM Bhati Shakti program is a digital platform which acts as a centralized platform for all 16 governmental departments like railways, roads and highways, petroleum and gas and others. So the portal will use geomapping and real-time data to coordinate various infrastructure projects across the country. Better coordination will help in removing the delays in the infrastructure projects and by better planning they can execute the projects easily. Number two is that Gadi Shakti will also include infrastructure like the Bharat Mala, Sagar Mala, Bharat Net and inland waterways. The targets for the ministries under the Gadi Shakti plan are Number one, increasing the total cargo handled at Indian ports to 1759 million tons per annum by 2024-2025, up from 1282 MTPA in 2020, as well as increasing cargo movement on national waterways to 95 tons from about 74 tons in the same period. Number two is that they want to add over 200 airports and many of you have obviously seen the T2 Bangalore airport which is absolutely gorgeous. It's like a status symbol, right, for every metro city to have such an awesome airport. But the government's not going to stop there. They want to do 200 airports, helipads, water aerodromes over the next four to five years besides nearly doubling the existing natural gas pipeline network which is about 19,000 kilometers today. Number three is they want to develop 11 industrial corridors, increasing defense production turnover to 1.7 lakh crores, establishing electronics and pharma clusters and more. For roads, the target is to have national highways of 2 lakh kilometers and connecting northeastern state capitals with highways. Number four, for railways, the goal is to increase cargo handling and decongest the network, including implementing two dedicated freight corridors. Now, combined with the PM Gati Shakti, the National Logistics Policy also includes 35 multimodal logistics park. What is this multimodal, you might ask? Multimodal logistics parks are basically like huge sports stadiums, say at least 100 acres. But instead of a field and stands, it includes warehouses and cold storage where the goods are stored safely and where they are shipped to other cities via trucks, ships and trains. These form the hubs of the hub and spoke model. They also want to include rooms for product testing and custom support. For any business owner who shipped a product from abroad into India, you know that the custom department can sometimes give you help. Also, I don't know if you've gone through the experience of the customs department opening something in front of you, but now when you order something in bulk quantity from abroad, you can actually have them open it in front of you and you can actually have all these checks done in a very specific place. The government has already identified places like Bangalore, Chennai and Nagpur where all these MMLPs will be constructed. Okay, so I know it's been a very, very short period of time. It's probably been a year, year and a half. But let's give a quick report card, right? Let's find out what's happened so far. Before the Modi government introduced NLP and other initiatives like Gati Shakti, in 2018, India ranked 44th in the Logistics Policy Index. Since then, we have jumped to the 38th position in the rankings in 2023. On the other hand, the ULIP portal, which is sort of like the UPI portal but for logistics, has already gone live and contains over 600 plus logistics players already. One thing that many of us have noticed, especially in the startup world, is that the government's actually really good implementing technology. So just like UPI was done and now works at massive scale, now ULIP has also come out and it does fairly well. 11.8 lakh crore transactions have already happened on the platform, which is a reasonably good number. So unlike UPI, this is not really a consumer platform. So maybe you haven't heard of how big it's become. 11.8 lakh crore transactions is not a small number. And I'm surprised this snuck up on me and I didn't realize 
what was happening in this space because there are a couple of business ideas that entrepreneurs could have caught up on if they were spending time subscribing to and watching Breakdown. According to the government, since the launch of the Sagarmala project, the turnaround time at ports has reduced from 44.7 hours to 26.58 hours, which is significant at ports. On the other hand, with the introduction of cargo tracking, dwell time, which is the time a container unit spends in a port, has significantly reduced. Now, even though this is not really my interest area, I happen to know a thing or two about ports because I went to Dubai, I spent some time with the DP World CEO and the team, and I got to learn so much about the ports ecosystem that I knew nothing about. But I do know that at least for cross country, the sea is actually a very important and economical travel route. In fact, between May and October 2022, the average dwell time for containers was three days for India, but seven days for US and 10 days for Germany. Just last year, our major ports recorded the highest cargo volume of 795 million tons. So we seem to be doing a lot of good things on the ports and reducing our reliance on the roads. Under the Gati Shakti itself, within two years, the clearance time for the approval of projects has reduced massively from 200 to 300 days to less than 40 days, while the time for preparing detailed project reports has now been cut to just 15 days from six months earlier. More importantly, our logistics costs have now reduced to 8.9% of the GDP, which means that we've already kind of reached our goal of bringing down the logistics costs to under 9% of the GDP. The question now is, will that actually sustain? While the dedicated freight corridors, which were supposed to be built to increase the railway's shares in freight transport, have seen the eastern freight corridor getting complete, with 95% of the overall corridor set to be completed by March 2024. So these are all the pros and I think given the short period of time, it is reasonably good progress. Lastly, let's go over challenges and failures. Where did they not do as well? When it comes to making plans for improving delivery infrastructure, only four ministries, the Ministry of Coal, Ministry of Steel, Ministry of Power and Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways have submitted their plans. The reason behind this is that many of the other departments have not been able to allocate land and funds to many of these ideas. Number two is that the Bharat Malas project phase one has now been delayed for up to six years to 2028. It was supposed to be completed by 2022, but till November 2023, only 42% of the project has been completed, while the project cost has also shot up by 100%. And Bharat Mala is not alone to be delayed because of land acquisitions. Even the Sagar Mala project has been delayed because of a similar issue. One thing I want to complain about, even though it's not explicitly put down the LLP, is that internet penetration is still low in rural areas. I think if you want transparency of what's happening in rural areas, if you want to know what's happening in a truck in a rural area, then you need to make sure internet penetration there is better. Because the central platform ULIP definitely depends on the internet. And if you don't have internet in rural areas, then many of your plans might not actually work out. Lastly, we still lag behind in our warehouses and cold storage capabilities. According to a CARE ratings report, 90% of the warehousing space in India is controlled by unorganized players, with most warehouses having an area of less than 10,000 square feet, which leads to high costs and problems in storing. Now, when it comes to cold storage chains, especially for things like meats, 60% of the cold storage facilities are in states like Punjab, UP, West Bengal and Gujarat. And because of this lack of distributed cold storage facilities, we suffer from food losses worth about $14 billion. So clearly there's a need for upgrading and expanding our warehouses, which was spoken about in the NLP and the PM Gati Shakti, which right now seems controlled by the unorganized players but the government definitely needs to have a role to play there. Now, that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something. What we're doing with these reports, we make these reports internally. So we have a team that actually sits down and puts these reports together. It's the first time we're doing a video like this. And the entire goal with this is to take something that is out there and pretty complicated and try to make it as simple as we potentially can for you guys to learn from and also see if there are business ideas for you to pick up on. But most importantly, it's to keep you informed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Bye.